Moving on to male genitalia and the prostate. This is the male reproductive system, which as you know, makes hormones which causes sexual behavior, sex drive, and secondary sexual characteristics. For example, it causes the penis to enlarge, testes to create sperm, and pubic hair to grow, and even men to grow in height, as well as have increased testosterone. Now, in terms of reproductive organs, they serve two different purposes. So they produce offspring and also provide sexual pleasure. So as for men, they have one hole, which is in the urethra, and that transports both urine as well as sperm, that semen. Now, this part is very important. Typically, the urethra should be midline. Now, if it's not located midline, then we have a problem. Either that urethra opening, that hole inside the penis, is high or low, so epispadius versus hypospadius. So for hypospadius, think low. The urethra opening is on the ventral side, or basically underneath. And then for epispadius, think on top. So the urethra opening is on the dorsum side of the penis, or really on the top. So think dolphin for dorsum side of the penis there. Now moving on to foreskin, or what's known as prepuce. This is what covers the glands and can be removed or excised to the surrounding corona area. Now this is called circumcision, where we're just taking off that excess skin. Now if a client is not circumcised, then we want to teach the parents regarding hygiene and prevent any type of smegma. So smegma is just simply sloughing epithelial cells and even mucus that collects between the glands and that foreskin, forming a white, cheesy type of nasty substance. So we always encourage clients to clean this area and provide themselves with self-care. Now, two important things can occur with those who are uncircumcised. The first one is pimosis or phimosis. This is non-retractability of that foreskin. So basically, the foreskin gets stuck and we can't really pull it back. And it forms a pointy tip with a tiny orifice. Now, this is considered normal during the early years. But after two to three years old, we do not want it to occur anymore. So just think about that stuck foreskin. Now, if this foreskin does get stuck and becomes so tight that it's impossible to retract over the glands and cannot be stretched out, then pain sets in as the penis can get hard with an erection. Now, it should stretch, so we teach parents to do this when they, they do diaper changes, as well as showers and baths and we encourage the clients, or their parents really, to remove or move the foreskin back and forth to make it stretch and prevent it from sticking later on in age. Hey, did you see the new study guide that follows along with this video? So cut your study time in half and increase your retention of the need to know key points and memory tricks that love to come up on nursing school exams. Plus, get 900 more videos not here on YouTube, neatly organized into playlists. Try it for free. Visit simplenursing.com today. Now, paraphimosis is the worst one here. This is where the foreskin gets retracted and fixed but is trapped backwards. So basically it cuts off blood supply. It's a medical emergency. So once retracted behind the glands, it gets tight and inflamed foreskin cannot be returned to the original position. And once again, as mentioned before, it impedes circulation. It basically cuts off circulation blood supply to that little weenie area. So this is a medical emergency. If not fixed immediately, the client can lose their appendage. So a little side note here, for someone who is not circumcised, then either through sexual play or accidents, it can get pulled back and stuck, resulting in this medical emergency. The cremasteric reflex is next. So this reflex is the movement of the scrotum related to the cremasteric muscle. So we call it the cremasteric reflex. Very important for the scrotum to maintain the appropriate temperature control. Because remember, the scrotum is that sac that houses the testes. And the testes are what creates the sperm that gets added to the semen. Now, sperm are very sensitive to temperature change. They need to be about three degrees below core body temperature, which is why the testes are in this little pouch that hangs a little bit away from the body to keep it at that appropriate temperature. So if you think if the external temperature is cold, then the cremasteric muscle has to contract, lifting the scrotum and the testes up closer to the body to try to keep them warm and at that appropriate temperature.
if the external environment is warm or hot, then it will relax and the scrotum will be lowered away from the body so that way they don't get overheated. So this is a very important reflex. In order for a nurse to examine the cremasteric reflex to make sure it is intact, the nurse would be looking at the external genitalia of the client and looking at the scrotum and the testy region, you would take the reflex hammer, the end component, and you would draw it up on the inner thigh. The ipsilateral testicle, or the testicle on that same side of the thigh being scraped, would lift up, and that would demonstrate that the cremasteric reflex is intact. Now, other conditions to assess for are hernias. As you guys know, hernias result from strenuous activity or really lifting something very heavy. We're pushing down a lot of weight and sometimes the muscle can get weak and we push intestine through that muscle, right? So we typically have our clients bear down or even cough to see any protrusions through that muscle, which would result in or really manifest a hernia. So a scroidal mass that remains when the client lies down or over which the bowel sounds can be auscultated is a scrotal hernia. And a bulging or mass on the front of the thigh in the femoral canal area is a femoral hernia. Now a noticeable bulge in the inguinal area, what do you think? Yes, it's an inguinal hernia. Now a hernia is often strangulated if the blood supply is cut off. And in this case, the client is typically complaining of extreme tenderness as well as nausea. And if the mass in the scrotum cannot be pushed into the abdomen, it could be an incarcerated hernia. Let's talk about some abnormalities or conditions. One to assess for and really watch for is testicular torsion. So with those testicles, we know that there's a right and a left testy. The left testy hangs lower because that left spermatic cord is longer. So in testicular torsion, the testicle actually wraps or twists around that spermatic cord. So of the two, the right and the left, which one do you think is more common for that to happen to? Oh man, the left, because it's longer? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. More commonly it happens in the left spermatic cord because that left hangs lower. This, if it happens, usually happens in our younger clientele, usually from ages 12 to 16. It can be common in high school, especially with sports injuries, like if they do wrestling, football, anything that's really athletic like that. What the client would complain of is they would have sudden excruciating unilateral pain in the testicle. And it has that sudden onset, usually it can happen in the middle of the night while they're sleeping or after a trauma in the middle of some physical activity. And again, very important, so write this down. Usually it's the left side because that spermatic cord is longer. And what we as the nurse would assess would be a swollen scrotum and one testy would be higher due to that rotation and that shortening from that rotation. Also of note, the cremasteric reflex that we talked about before would be absent on the side of the torsion. Now this is important, 911, go to the hospital right away because blood supply is gonna be impaired and it can result in ischemia and some venous engorgement. So the testes can actually become gangrenous within a few hours. So it's considered a surgical emergency. Now, orchitis, this is inflammation of the testes, usually associated with mumps or even measles. In this, the scrotum becomes enlarged and reddened. The client would usually complain of fever, malaise, have swelling on the sides of the neck in those lymph node regions, and would probably test positive for mumps. And then we would note that orchitis had occurred. And oftentimes the client can complain of sort of a heaviness or pain in the scrotal region. Now moving on to a varicocele. Now think, when's the last time we talked about a word that had the word varico in it? Ah, uh, the varicose veins. Absolutely, so that's what you wanna think of when you think of this. With this, essentially, the veins inside the scrotum sac get dilated, tortuous, just like varicose veins. So they feel like a bag of worms. And oftentimes patients will say it feels heavy when standing and it can relax and feel not as heavy when laying down. Just like varicose veins in the legs, worse when standing, better when laying down. Now for an interesting one, Peyronie's disease. Peyronie's disease typically occurs because of a buildup of fibrous plaques, which often happens in our patients with uncontrolled diabetes. Hmm. So here's what happens. 
A client will come in saying they have a J, a C, or a U-shaped curvature that occurs to the penis when erect. Hmm. And again, most at risk are these diabetic patients. Hmm. So you want to let them know that if they don't get their sugars under control, mm -hmm. this is something that could happen. Oh, wow. It's not really known to be painful, but it's painful to look at. <laughs> All right, now let's cover some very specific disorders from the reproductive area. Let's play those videos right now. Cryptorchidism is the next topic. This is a testicle that hasn't moved into the scrotum, the bag of skin below the penis before birth. Basically, it's an undescended testicle, which is common in premature baby boys. Now, it's not priority, since in most cases, the testy will descend spontaneously by six months after birth. So don't let the NCLEX trick you here. Many students think it's a major concern, but no, it's not. Now what is a major concern is that if it's not corrected after one year old, then the male baby can become sterile later on in life, meaning they won't be able to have children. So surgery can be used to fix this.